A storm has also caused significant damage northeast of Austin. In Taylor, about 70 families returned to flooded homes today. Fox 7's Rudy Koski is live in Taylor with that. Rudy. Hi, Mike. There's still a lot of runoff from the storms heading down streams, just like this one, especially here in the Taylor area. But what's coming down these streams right now is a lot more manageable than what the residents here were facing just yesterday. The floodwaters have receded in Taylor, but for Annette Mackey and her family, we gonna need that other kind of because this is not gonna do it. The heartache caused by the Memorial Day storms, that remains. It tears me up. We have nothing. Like I work so hard to get all this by myself and I have nothing. We have nothing. This is what Mackey's housing complex on the southeast part of town looked like Monday evening. In some spots, the water was chest high. Initially, city officials identified 68 homes as being damaged. What else are we going to take? Tuesday, several residents returned to salvage what they could. Joseph Salazar and his family don't have much, except their lives. They were saved by a police officer who fought back a strong current that had jammed their front door. We were able to crack it and eventually pull it back a little bit and handed the, the kids off to the police, the women, and they were able to assure us that everything's going to be okay. There were more rescues like this one by local authorities, but some heroics were also done by neighbors. The young guy, uh, Gerald Mason, came up to me and he said, ma'am, do you want me to go and get him? Maybe there's snakes in that water. Despite that, Deborah Tyson told me the young man and his brother went into the water to save her 70-year-old cousin and they couldn't get the door open and they pulled him out through the window and the young guy put him on his back and brought him to safety. That was such a heroic act to where I broke down and cried. Christine and Joe Garcia didn't wait for help to arrive. They grabbed their four sons. Within you know, 15 minutes, yeah. it just came up so quick. Throw yeah. them on your backs and just yeah, wait it I out. Had, she I had, had two, two under there and I had one on one my arm. back and went back and grabbed the other yeah. one. Trouble was not limited just to residential areas. Small creek beds became rivers like the one that shut down Highway 79. A popular restaurant by the airport was also overrun by high water. The people who live here are determined to wipe away this muddy mess and rebuild their lives, but there's also a feeling that they're having to do this by themselves. <sighs> But Aquarius White and her four-year-old daughter believe the mark left behind by the storm will eventually fade away, and they will find a way to bounce back. God by my side, I can start over. Maybe it be maybe everything happened for a reason. So hey, you never know. Everything happened for a reason, so it might be better. And that's the prayer here in Taylor. It might be better. And things are looking better, even though parks like this one are closed. The airport is still closed while they're still doing cleanups. The, state, the city is wrapping up a damage assessment, but they don't have a dollar amount yet. And the number of homes and businesses that, that have been reported as damaged, that could go up. It also could possibly go down. Residents are being asked to drop off their debris at one of two regular uh, drop-off sites that the city has, but you can also do curbside pickup with your, on your regular garbage day. But they're also pointing out if you're going to do that, stack up your debris neatly, and it cannot be longer than four feet long. Now back to you in the studio. Okay, Rudy, thank you for that.